Friday. With that, the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan, is recognized. Mr. Horowitz, does Peter Strzok like the president? Um, I can only speak to what his text messages say, and they're obviously not positive comments about the president. February and March of 2016, Peter Strzok said, Trump's abysmal. Trump's an idiot. He's a bleeping idiot. Hillary should win $100 million to zero. Sounds to me like he hates the president. His text messages would certainly leave that as the implication. Your report says Strzok ran the Clinton investigation on a daily basis. Is that accurate? Uh, that's correct. And Peter Strzok, in your report, uh, he was the lead investigator on the Russian investigation. Is that true? That's my understanding for the time period he was on. So the guy, he ran the Clinton investigation, he runs the Russian investigation, and he hates the president, but your report says while his bias cast a cloud, it didn't impact final decisions. Is that accurate? It didn't impact the prosecutor's final decision. Right. Let's look at a few other things Peter Strzok had to say. On May 4th, 2016, the day after President Trump secures the Republican nomination, Mr. Strzok says now the pressure really starts to finish the Clinton investigation. I'm not sure why the pressure would be more or less the day after. It seems to me you want to just do the investigation. On July 31st, as I mentioned earlier, the FBI opens the Russian investigation. One week later, Peter Strzok says, I can protect my country on many levels. Two days after that, he says, we will stop Trump. <laughs> One week after that, he says, no way he gets elected. It's like an insurance policy. So think about this, Mr. Horowitz. Peter Strzok opens, the FBI opens the Russia investigation on July 31st, 2016. Peter Strzok is the lead investigator. Within the next 15 days, he says, I can protect my country on many levels. No way he gets elected. We will stop him. We have an insurance policy. Now, that seems like at least I think a lot of regular folks would interpret that as more than just casting a cloud on what the FBI ultimately did. I mean, it's one thing to say Trump's an idiot. It's another thing to say we got an insurance policy. It's one thing to say Trump's awful. It's another thing to say we're going to stop him, especially when those statements are made within 15 days, just days after you've launched an investigation into that individual. Would you agree? Um, and I think the important thing here is the time period we're talking about, because those messages in the July, August period, which we found extremely concerning and antithetical to the core values of the FBI, um, concerned, as we noted, the Russia investigation, and as you noted. Um, and that's why we had so much concern about what occurred in late September and October. Exactly. Uh, Mr. Horowitz, was Peter Strzok put on special counsel Mueller's team? Uh, he was. So again, just to, the guy who hates the president, the guy who ran the Clinton investigation, the guy who ran the Russian investigation, then gets assigned to the special counsel team. Do you know what, uh, do you know what date, Mr. Horowitz, the special counsel was named? I believe it was around May 17th. May 17th, 2017. May 17th, 2017. Mr. Horowitz, do you remember what Peter Strzok said on May 18th, 2017? I, I do. It's in our report on page 405. I unleashed it on the mid-year exam, this one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now I need to fix it and finish it. There's unfinished business, and this could be an investigation leading to impeachment. That's what he said the day after? Correct. Again, don't you think that sounds and looks a little bit like to regular Americans a little bit more than just casting a cloud on the overall investigations? Again, I'd go back to what the report concerned, which was the Clinton email investigation, which um, was concluded about a year earlier with Director Comey's announcement. But it's precisely why we were concerned about what occurred in late September and October when Mr. Strzok had the choice between working on the Russia investigation right. or on the Wiener laptop Clinton investigation. He was prioritizing one over the other. chose Russia. Yeah. Um, let me just finish with this. And, and this is probably what bothers me. More, more than all of what we just went through, this, more than that, probably what bothers me the most is Peter Strzok's attitude. Um, I think it's what bothers Americans the most about this whole ordeal. I just want to go to one more text message that one more thing Mr. Strzok said. This is back in that August time period again. Yep. August 26, 2016, Peter Strzok says, just went to a Southern Virginia Walmart. I can smell the Trump supporters. 
This is what this is what ticks Americans off more than anything else. I'm convinced about all this in Clinton, Clinton investigation, all this Russian investigation is this idea that there are there, there are two sets of rules or two standards. One set of rules for us regular folk who shop at Walmart, but a different set if your name is Clinton, Comey, Lynch, McCabe, or if your name is Peter Strzok. And the arrogance and the condescension and the elitist attitude, that is what that is what ticks people off. And as they look at all this and see what Strzok said throughout these investigations, that's why their confidence is so shaken. And frankly, that's why they're so mad. Um, and that's why we got to get some answers from Mr. Rosenstein and Mr. Ray about this, about this whole ordeal. With that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Jim. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Uh, Mr. Horowitz, how many text messages were exchanged between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page? Um, I don't have an exact number, but tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. And uh, we got to see most of these last fall and over the last several months. But there was one we didn't get to see. Uh, one text message we didn't get to see that uh, until last week when your report came out. Yeah. And it just happened to be the most explosive one, the one that says, we'll stop Trump. Mm -hmm. How come we didn't see that beforehand? Um, let me explain how we ended up finding that, because I think it's important to also appreciate the... I guess I'm more interested in, in, in if, if someone was trying to hide it. Uh, well, we uncovered it in May, so last month. We um, uncovered it in our fourth round of work on their personal on their FBI <laughs> device. That, that's my question. If you uncovered it a month ago, why did we not see it until last Thursday? Um, I can't answer that question. We provided the but, but who, materials who made to the, the department. decision? Was it Mr. Ray? Was it Mr. Rosenstein? Was it Mr. Sessions? Who made the decision? What we have done as we found these texts is send them to the department um, and to, for them to produce it to Congress. Um, and that's what we did um, in May. And who at the department, though? Um, we sent it to the Office of the Deputy Attorney General and... So Mr. Rosenstein? Uh, in his office. Mr. Of Rosenstein made a decision people. that instead of us seeing the most explosive text message between these two key agents who were on the Clinton team, the Russia team, and on the special counsel team, he made a decision to wait a month for us to see that... that that text message. I, I can't speak to whether anyone made a conscious decision. I would just say we had, a, there was, in that fourth recovery that we made in May, there was 100,000 plus lines of text to go through. Most, all, all of them we'd found before. This did, one was one we hadn't. We didn't see it or pick it up until June. And be, did you not see it or was it hidden from you? Because we have the text message right before it and the one that happened right after it, but somehow that one, the most explosive one, was missing from the pages that we got months ago. And I can explain how we ended up finding it because it was missing from, we did not have it either. So, they, so, so the, we recovered the it. department didn't give it to you either? I don't think the department had it. And I can okay. explain why they, I don't think they had it. Um, these text messages, um, were retained by the FBI pursuant to a data collection where they were pulling text messages. I'm not a tech person. I'll do my best here. They were pulling them off the FBI devices. They each had two, their own FBI phones. They were pulling them. As we got these texts and found these, these concerning messages in 2017, we then asked the FBI for all their text messages. When we got all their text messages, as you know, we found a, a window, a period of several months right. where it was zero. We then went and got their phones and said, okay, if the FBI isn't collecting them, we're going to try and extract, extract them from the phones. We did a first run through using our cyber forensics capabilities, collected material. We then went to our outside vendor that we used to see what else that contractor had. We did another go round with some additional tools, found more. We then went to the Defense Department. Okay. The and same thing. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm thankful that Mr. Shabby yielded me time, but I, okay. I, I, I got the gist of it. You had to ju jump through all kinds of hoops to retrieve it. Correct. The point Off is, the when phone. you did get it, Mr. Rosenstein decided we couldn't get it until your report came out. He sat on it for a month of, of time. I, I can't speak to how they... Well, it's not the first time Mr. Yes. Rosenstein has kept us from getting information. I mean, he's hid information from us. He redacted all kinds of important conversations between Strzok and Page. He redacted that from us. We had to go over to the Justice Department and find it. So this wouldn't be the first time he hasn't given us information, frankly, I think we're entitled to. I want to real, well, I got 30 seconds. I don't have time to get into another subject area here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Horowitz, I, I appreciate that, but I do think it's interesting that you had it, you discovered it, 
and we couldn't get it right away. Like all the other text messages, we had to wait until the final report. With that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Um, Horowitz, I want to go back to where we were just a few minutes yep. ago. This text message, that this, this mysterious one that was the most explosive one, disappeared, re refound, but the department sits on it for a month. Can we get a copy of the correspondence that you had with Mr. Rosenstein? Was, was there any type of – how did you communicate to the, the Justice Department that you had found this text message? My agent sent it by email. So you sent, a, you sent an email. Did you uh, get this printout, the spreadsheets, you know, of all the texts? We had 120,000 or so, 100,000 lines of text. So you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't specify we found this one that had been missing? I then, when, when we found it, I specified to the Associate Deputy Attorney General on June 8 that he ought to look at this one. Oh, so you sent it to him last month, but then you specifically pointed out to him uh, last week or two weeks ago. Correct. When we when we identified it and saw it as we were going through these hundred thousand. What, what do you, what what response did he give you when you pointed it out? The most uh, explosive text message. Uh, thank you for telling me about it. Thank you for telling me about. It. Well, yeah, I think so, but not like well, we need to get this to Congress like we did all the others right away. Um, I'd engage, engage him on that. Do, do you know if there's anything nefarious at work? Because we, when we got the original pages of the text, it had the prompting question from Ms. Page. It says he's not ever going to become president, right? We had that one. We've as had it for we. months, as did you. So why didn't we get the response? All the other times we get the back and forth, this time we did it. I, I think actually it goes to the technical, technological issue that we think needs to get addressed and fixed, okay. frankly, because... What happened here is on the fourth go-round, when we were doing our quality control check on what we had done, we found a, uh, an operating system program um, in the phone that was- So you think it was technical? You think it was a technical problem? It, it's, to us, that's what it appears right. as to why this wasn't found before May. I'm more concerned about why Mr. Rosenstein didn't give us the information when he first got it. It seems to me he should have. Uh, let me go to something else here. How many different- um, investigations you have going on right now. Are you looking at, you're looking at Mr. Comey, you're looking at yeah. FISA, potential abuse of the FISA court process, and are you looking at uh, the leak issue with, with the FBI? Are you looking at, have you got three other ones going on? We got lots of investigations Well, I know, but it's relative to this it's, subject, it's, I know you got lots. Yes, but we're looking at uh, the leak issue as well. That's ongoing. So all three of those remain of ongoing. Within ongoing investigations, right? Yeah. Do, do, you, do you have any idea when I'm particularly, well, I'm interested in all of them, but I'm particularly interested in the FISA, potential abuse of the FISA process. Do you have any idea when that one will be complete? Um, I don't, Congressman, in part, as you know, a few weeks ago we were asked to look, uh, broaden that and, and look at some additional inf information and issues. Um, do you anticipate you know, it taking 18 months like this Clinton investigation I, one did, Mr. Horwitz? I don't anticipate it, but let me just say, if we had released this report in January, you would not have most of these text messages. No, I understand. I, I mean, you got to you got to do your work, but I'm. So, I, mean, I don't. I, I can't. As important I, I didn't as it is, that. when you right. when you look at looking at the FISA potential abuse of the FISA process, will you be looking at the question of whether Mr. Rosenstein threatened staff members on the House Intelligence Committee? Um, I've read about that recently, and I'm certainly, as in all instances, available to take information. I only know at this point what. But will that be with the, will that be within the parameters of your investigation? That 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 question. Um, frankly, I'd have to understand a little bit more about it and what occurred um, and how it might connect to this, if at all, or whether it's something separate. Will you look at the issue of why, when the dossier was taken to the FISA court, they didn't tell the court who paid for the document? Will Cer you look at that question? Certainly within the FISA review. Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. Parliamentary Mr. Inquiry. Horowitz, when you, uh, when you in, your, in the course of your investigation, will you look at the question of why when the application was taken to the FISA court, do they didn't reveal the fact that the author of the document, the author of the dossier... Chairman, I have a parliamentary been, inquiry. The uh, gentleman from Ohio controls the time. Uh, is it not appropriate to raise the question as to what is the germaneness of the gentleman's line of questioning and whether or not we're dealing with the report of Mr. Horowitz or we're dealing with the Republicans' attempt to undermine the Mueller investigation and as well to Mr. fire Deputy Secretary, uh, excuse me, Attorney General Rosenstein, the which they're planning to do on Friday. The general lady has um, not stated not a parliamentary inquiry. The gentleman from Ohio controls the time, and I would ask that the time be put back on the clock that was usurped by the general lady from Texas. I would just respond, Mr. Chairman. It's been widely understood that when the dossier was taken to the FISA court to get a secret warrant to spy on 
a fellow American citizen, they didn't tell the court two important facts. They didn't tell the court who paid for the document. They didn't tell the court the guy who wrote it had been fired by the FBI. And I'm just asking, as Mr. Horowitz undergoes this important investigation, if he'll be examining those two fundamental questions. Um, I, I, we will take under advisement those and other questions that have been raised. And as we said with this review, um, if we find additional issues, we will look at those as well. And partly that's why just this one is last question, if I could, Mr. Horowitz. Report. When um, May 17th, 2017, Rod Rosenstein writes a memo outlining the scope and parameters of the special counsel investigation. Mm -hmm. On August 2nd, 2017, he writes another memo that in some way alters, amends, modifies the initial scope of the investigation. And yet we can't see that, the American people can't see that. Seems to me, if you're altering the scope of an investigation into the guy that the American people made president of the United States, we, we as Americans deserve to know exactly the parameters and scope of that investigation. So will you be able to get a hold of that August 2nd memo and make that available in the course of your investigation? Gentlemen, his time has expired, um, but you may answer the question. Um, I'd have to think about how that connected to our investigation um, and w what um, connectivity, germaneness it would have to ours. I'm happy to consider it. I have not seen either of those memos myself. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm, on its face, I'm not sure the connection between that and the FISA, but I'll certainly take it under advisement, Congressman. Thank you.